Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Today we bring you something completely different. Uh, this is one of those things I never thought I'd have in my shop, much less be working on one. Um, but what we have here is a vintage Moog modular. Uh, this is the 1C, and it was built around 1972, um, August of 1972 to be exact, uh, based on the date codes I'm finding. And uh, basically it's going to this one, gonna be doing a, a really, really deep servicing on it and some preservation and repair. Uh, that's gonna be the the uh, what this one's actually getting from my client so just to make sure it's gonna be a really good unit for him that he can play and enjoy and uh, you know not give him a lot of fits as far as you know uh, things working on it so I've already kind of started I uh, had to repair one of the oscillators I had a dead oscillator altogether the 921 oscillator was completely dead um, so repaired it uh, got it fixed and it's got all three oscillators again and as you can hear, it's got that classic tone that we have all grown up with and love, which is that Keith Emerson sound, of course. But, of course, you can get other sounds out of it, too. But this is the one that you see a modular, you pretty much got to hear this. It's that tone. it has that tone uh, that's just classic you know um, but anyways since you've heard it, I'm actually gonna be walking you through the modules showing you what this thing has in it and kind of explaining kind of how some of this works as well because I know it's kind of a great area for a lot of uh, people that look at Mo modular versus other uh, formats so what we got we'll start in the oscillator section as mentioned you got three oscillators uh, but you got an oscillator driver the 921a now this is where confusion kind of happens to a lot of people I do believe and even myself when I looked at this I was like well why do you have that and all this it makes sense now so you have your oscillator driver and two 921 B's so these are actually the VCOs here this is actually the VCOs this is a driver and what its point is is to give it a master tune and to give it a pulse width control for your rectangular output so this is actually I can change the pulse width and it, it basically controls the two 921Bs. That's how that works. Now I believe the 921A will support three oscillators. I'm not 100% sure on that. So if you had another 921B in here, you could actually use this as well to drive those two as well. Um, but you still have your frequency controls here. So you can kind of think of this kind of like a mini Moog in a way. You have your master tune and then you have your detune. So this would be an example of like two and three oscillator. Um, you don't have a fixed oscillator, so to speak. They're all going to have a, a frequency uh, adjust here, but then you just got a master that's over the two oscillators altogether. That's kind of how that works. Uh, but you got your footage controls, like what you found in Minimog, actually the same range. So 32, 16, 8, 4, and 2 footages with a low for LFO, uh, using these things as LFO source. And then you've got the 921 oscillator. So this oscillator, you can already tell it looks different than these two. And what it actually is, it's kind of a self-contained oscillator. It actually has its own rectangular pulse width control. Um, it has a little bit more features. It has a, a clamping trigger. It has your range, your frequency. And it also has auxiliary output right here waveform where you can actually plug in inverted or non-inverted with our attenuator. And you can actually control the, the levels of these waveforms. But it actually has your switch, kind of like what you found in Mini Moog. So all your waveforms you can select by switch. But you still have your typical modular setup where you have your individual uh, plug-in. So you, you know, if you want a sawtooth, you plug in there, for example. So that's how that all works. But that's the oscillator section. We'll drop down to the bottom cabinet and I'll explain this right quick too. So you've got these little little boxes right here that actually says control voltages. One is for the keyboard. Two is for the ribbon controller, which I have in the other room. I had not tried it out yet. And then three, I don't know yet. And then four is for external input, if I'm not mistaken. So I still got some uh, some gray areas I hadn't really dug into yet because I've just been primarily getting all the modules working. Um, but uh, when you select one, basically it's going to use the CV voltage from the keyboard to control these oscillators here. And, of course, when you turn it off, it won't have any, as you can... You can hear you only hear in this oscillator here turn it back on now it's actually going to put these oscillators in with that cv 
So if we move over here to this section, then you got this oscillator, the 921. It's got the same thing. It's got this panel here that's set up just for this one oscillator. So you can turn it off, and then you'll just hear these track the keyboard. For example. And then what you've got is you've got four mixers down here. So there's actually audio mixers that can be probably used for other applications as well, because there's inverted, non-inverted, master gain. And I'm using one of these just for routing all the oscillators in a summing mix to run them to the uh, filter. So that's your oscillator section, and that's kind of how you can see how you select what you want the CV to do in this particular cabinet. Next we got the 903A, which is a random signal generator. It generates white noise and pink noise. And then we've got a little filter attenuator, which is very simple. It's actually a very simple module. It's not even powered. And basically it's just a set of capacitors, and you're changing which capacitor you use on the uh, setting of the low pass and how it's wired in. So you got a low pass and high pass. So kind of a cool little module. And then you've got a attenuator here. So it actually lets you attenuate the volume amount or mix. So you've got the filter and attenuator. Then you've got the 905 reverb uh, unit. This is actually a spring reverb and uh, sounds fantastic. That's a really cool uh, feature of this modular. Then we got the 907 fixed filter bank, which is a very interesting uh, filter bank. Now you can kind of think from my Polymog videos, the resonator. You can kind of think about that, but this is a whole different uh, design in this particular case because they're using inductance. So you can almost think like a Hammond organ, almost in some of the applications of, of using inductance to change, you know, filter characteristics, that kind of stuff. So really cool there. Uh, a lot of these pots are so dirty, they don't even... They, I've got to really clean these pots. They're really bad. Then we got the legendary module right here. This is the, the module that really put Moog on the map. Uh, this is their uh, transistor ladder filter, the 904A. And it's actually the same transistor ladder filter that you'd find in like a mini Moog. And uh, it's just got that, it's got that tone that you've already heard. Um, so you got the, the transistor ladder filter. Then we got the two voltage controlled amplifiers, the 902s. And this is where the modular application really comes in. So a lot of people are like, why, why would you have a modular? For those that might be questioning why you'd even want a modular, something this big. Well, you can get into different routings. So for example, I've got this thing set up in parallel where we've got the fixed filter bank going into one VCA and the uh, transistor ladder going to another VCA. And so if I had my other amp plugged in here, we could actually plug these in together and pan them in a mix and have two separate filters uh, going in, in two separate channels with different uh, attack rates and all that because we can control the amplifiers from the 911 envelope generator. So then we got the envelope generators going into that. So we've got this envelope generator here which is working this voltage controlled oscillator. Then we've got this envelope here that's working this envelope generator. And I've got this 911 here actually tied into the uh, uh, transistor ladder filter that's actually giving it a, a sweep. Uh, so a contour, so to speak. And then we've got the, the multiples over here. So that's really what this thing offers. That's the modules it has. So it's not a really complex modular system. It gives you kind of the, the basic necessities you need, uh, especially for this for this application of what Moog had and what they offered for this time. And uh, just a fantastic instrument. I will show you though right quick. We'll go uh, from this We'll go to this other VCA so you can actually hear the fixed filter banks. Now they're not as, as cool sounding right now, but... But, like I say, a lot of... That's your high pass. Like I say, a lot of things don't work. Let me make this thing sustain for me a little longer too. So we'll go here and go... Like I said, a lot of these pots are so dirty they don't I have the panel loose too, so. Anyways, you can get the idea of kind of how that works. But that's the uh, that's the uh, fixed filter bank. And of course, now we're back in the other amplifier, which is the... Uh, once again, though, 
see so yeah, I got to do some major cleaning on this thing but that's the modules uh, that's what you got with this thing it's just a really cool uh, modular and of course I will go down here and mention this right quick so you've got your envelopes you can actually select which ones you want to trigger and you've got your uh, since Jones jacks like we you find on mini mogs etc we can patch this thing in but you got pitch inputs and then you got your triggers and you can actually select which envelope you want to trigger off these envelopes by selecting them here in this little bank down here so pretty cool stuff and then of course then you got your you know master power fuses all that good stuff but this one does say re moog on it which is really cool some of the modulars do say moog music but they're the early moog music uh badging because they are from 1972 these oscillators are from 1972 so they have the early moog music badging like what you found early mini moogs so really cool. Also the keyboard we're using uh, is a 950 keyboard controller. Just so you know, I, my camera's dead. Let me see if I can unplug I'll get you a picture up here. There we go. So you can kind of see here the 950 and you got your scale. This is actually how you'd range and scale this thing. The portamento and no glide, glide like the switch on the mini Moog there. So you can see they took some things from the module when they made the mini Moog. Which I've got my 72 mini Moog in here with the same area as this. and. But uh, you can see you got the glide switch kind of like that on the mini Moog as well. But the application of the oscillator layout you can see is you know similar to that. This would be example of this, for example. So that's just kind of a look at the two together there. But anyways, guys, I'll be uh, you know once I get this thing finished, I'll probably be documenting some of the stuff as I work on it, and this will be a kind of a series video. So this is part one. And uh, I'll keep you guys in the loop about what's going on. Can I show you guys the insides of this thing too? Because I know a lot of you guys will be curious about that. But anyways, thanks for watching. There will be more to come here very soon. Take care.